We try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The new story of the hour. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show map today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the last The government. Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and welcome back to Coffee and Crypto Live. This is your week daily morning show where we bring you the latest in everything Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about why a massive rally will be happening on Bitcoin very, very soon. Today, we're going to be talking about what we should be looking for in that movement that is to come. As all of you guys know, Bitcoin has been under a massive rally over the last 14 months. And in the next 14 months, Bitcoin is likely to move into the six figures for the first time, potentially even reaching as high as 200 to 250 thousand dollars today we're going to talk about when and how that breakout above all-time high will happen and how we can best prepare ourselves for that movement welcome everybody to the stream very very excited to see all of you here we've got beef in chat and crypto mini bike and ishmael uh mobber is in chat cosmic b joe bolia wreck the bears arslan sean o'brien joel ebbs said god bless you brother thank you very much i do appreciate that <clears throat> Romulosi Nine Skull said, Good morning. God will bless us today as he does every day. Absolutely. Brief Crypto's in chat. Bitcoin Trinity's in chat. Jack Brennan is in chat as well. KK, uh, Abraham Lee, Alex Kaimana, Music Tags, Bitcoin Trini, and so many more. Thank you, everybody who has tuned in this morning. Let's go ahead and jump on over to Coin Market Cap and get started. Bitcoin is currently trading at $68,585. It is down 4.53% in the last 24 hours. But we have been on a general uptrend over the last seven days. We've had a major uptrend where Bitcoin has rallied from recent local bottoms uh, down here around the mid $65,000 range, just below $65,000. And we've gone into a pretty substantial rally ever since. Now, one of the things that we've been watching out for very closely is this buy signal. We did actually manage to confirm a buy signal on Bitcoin yesterday. And we made a video about this yesterday, and that video will be coming out very soon. But in that video, we talk about how this buy signal that flashed on Lux Algo is likely going to give us a price target pushing up towards $80,000. You can now see that that price target has shown itself right over here, again, up towards $80,000. Absolutely huge price target. Very excited about that movement on Bitcoin. And we also see that the reversal zones, um, essentially the low range of where Bitcoin may go in the event of a correction, have rallied dramatically over the course of just the last few days. So very, very excited to see where Bitcoin is. And I also am very confident that it's going to be able to hold bottoms uh, at the lowest of probably around $60,000. I don't think we're going to have to go back to those levels. I do think that this buy signal and his price target are going to come into play. Now, you might be wondering, but Jeb, down on the hourly chart, Bitcoin is in the middle of dumping. So what goes on? Why are we having a massive crash the day that Lux Algo has a buy signal? Well, Lux Algo has flashed seven buy signals on the daily chart in the last year and a half. And this is something that you'll see in today's video once again, but here they are. We have flashed eight buy signals in the last year and a half. Seven of them have led to a rally of over 10%. Several of them have led to a rally of 50%. Only one of them has happened in the middle of a downtrend. Only one of them was a false buy signal when it was confirmed with trend catcher, and that was this one right here in May of 2023. The other seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, have all been actually very bullish movements, which is incredibly exciting because when we are looking at a buy signal coming in right now, I don't get too spooked about the fact that we're having a corrective movement today. It kind of makes sense. We rallied up to local resistance around $72,000. We have quite a lot of uncertainty around the halving. That uncertainty around what's going to happen with the halving will be gone in less than two weeks because the halving is coming in 10 days. The halving is now expected to occur 
on the 19th of April, 2024. After that having takes place and everything goes off without a hitch because there will not be a single technical difficulty in sight, it is going to go perfectly fine. What's going to end up happening is you're going to more than likely see a major rally on Bitcoin because the uncertainty around, oh my goodness, what's going to happen with the halving is finally going to be gone and the bullishness that is pent up in the market is going to be um, increasing at a parabolic rate. The amount of Bitcoin on the exchanges is at a massive, massive low. The amount of influx of people moving into the cryptocurrency space is at an all-time high. The enthusiasm around the Bitcoin ETFs is at an all-time high. When I'm doing financial coaching with you guys, I sit down and I talk to you, and just about every single one of you gives me the same take. I'm buying and holding cryptocurrencies other than Bitcoin and Ethereum for this market. I am buying and holding Bitcoin and Ethereum potentially forever. Many of you, I spoke to one of you yesterday. I won't say any names. Of course, it's all confidential, but I spoke to one of you yesterday in one of our coaching calls, and it was a great, it was a great time. Uh, this individual is worth about $5 million, had a multi-hundred thousand dollar crypto portfolio, pushing a million dollar value, and they are holding Bitcoin for the very long run. Very exciting stuff. Many of you guys, I've also spoken to people worth over $10 million that have, you know, $5 million of mining equipment. I've got all kinds of different um, clients here that I've spoken to, and pretty much all of them are thinking the same exact thing. I'm buying Bitcoin. I'm holding it for the long run. I'm sticking it in an IRA. I'm sticking it in, in a um, some kind of retirement account, and I'm going to hold it forever. And it is either for my children or my children's children or my children's children's children. It is uh, money that we're not going to touch for. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And the amount of Bitcoin that is being sucked out of circulation and held by big companies and uh, small individuals like us alike is astonishing, which is one of the major reasons why Bitcoin has been moonshotting and why it will continue to do so, because there is such a dearth of supply and such a massive amount of demand as a result of all of the enthusiasm that has come into the space as of late. So when we see a corrective movement on the daily chart that contradicts the buy signal on Lux Algo, I go with the buy signal on Lux Algo and I say this sell signal, this um, sell off on Bitcoin right here makes some sense. Bitcoin has gone through a decently substantial uh, movement over the last five days, rallied 12 and percent and having a correction is great. I'm not against that at all. We're pulling back down to previous all time high. If you will recall this red line right here uh, represents the previous all time high set on November the 10th, 2021. And so Bitcoin backtesting that level is to be expected. So the red movement that we're experiencing right now on Bitcoin is not something that I am very concerned about at all. I will not be concerned about it until Bitcoin would break below this uptrending level of support. And even then, I would expect a low at the most of the low 60s. That would come in from a symmetrical, tri sorry, not a symmetrical triangle pattern, an uptrending level of support that we find on the logarithmic chart, which is right here. This uptrending level of support would be our next level that Bitcoin would drop down to. If we fell below this uptrending level of support right here, we'd potentially fall back down here. That pulls us back down at the most down to around $56,000. There is a possibility that that could happen, by the way. We've got a Bitcoin CME gap that was not completely filled. For the most part, it was, but we didn't quite drop low enough to fill the CME gap. If we do see a drop, that isn't Excuse me, I'm so sorry. That is another target that we could see. Bitcoin could drop down here to about $64,000 to fill the gap. So what do we do here? We buy the dip. If Bitcoin crashes, you buy the dip. If Bitcoin goes even farther to the downside, you buy the dip. If Bitcoin goes to 54, you buy the dip. If Bitcoin goes to 64, you buy the dip. If Bitcoin goes to 20, you buy the dip. But Jeb, what if Bitcoin goes to zero? Say it with me. You buy the dip. Like, it's, it's that simple. It's not, it's not complicated. The long-term perspective on Bitcoin has basically never been better. And that's saying something, because it's a 15-year-old market. This is not a young market anymore. This market has been here for a while. It's been here since I was eight years old. I'm 23. Okay, it's been here for 15 years. That is not 150 years like the stock market, but it also ain't 15 minutes like some of these Ponzi schemes that I see some of you guys getting caught up in. At the end of the day, what matters is that we are seeing a very, very, very substantial bull market in Bitcoin. And what we need to do is to continue right along with our strategy, which is buying and holding and looking for good exits when they come. Right now, we're not even so much looking for good exits as we are looking for good entries. So for example, Solana is looking at a great 
entry right now. $170. You might think, oh my goodness, Jeb, $170 is a great entry. Compared to where it may go, yeah, I think so. Solana is currently sitting right above its previous market cap all-time high, uh, which was at that time $75 billion. Right now, we're at $75 billion, uh, $75 billion $900 million. We're about $300 million above previous all-time high. Solana is essentially back-testing its old all-time high on market cap. It's well below price action all-time high because it's been insanely inflationary, which is one of the main reasons that I advised somebody yesterday, or gave them my opinion anyway yesterday, if I woke up in their shoes, not to buy Solana for the long run because of the amount of inflation. But if you're trying to trade it for the cycle, the rally is likely going to outpace the inflation of Solana. I do want to caution you about holding Solana for the long run in something like a retirement account because Solana is actually inflating faster than the United States dollar. I would honestly rather you hold the United States dollar for the long run than Solana when it comes to inflation. Now, that being said, obviously, Solana is going to go up in value. But when you factor in that the dollar that the Solana is held in is deflating and the Solana itself is inflating, sorry, the, the dollar is inflating that you're holding, the, that is backing, uh, that is backed against and the Solana itself are both um, going through a good degree of inflation. I just want you to be careful about holding it for the long run. That being said, at the top of this market, people are going to make a lot of money. Solana is going to go very high and I'm going to be very happy because I'm going to sell a lot of it. Actually, I'm going to sell all of it. I'm going to sell it 1% a week, and I'm going to increase that very quickly. It'll probably be 2 or 3% within the first one or two weeks of when I start selling it of the portfolio, the withdrawal rate. It'll probably get to 5% very rapidly, um, and I'm taking um, money out of the position sticking it in cash and then deciding what we're in then you know following our plan for what we're going to do with that money so i'm not investing in solana for the long run i'm investing in bitcoin for the so long for the long run i am considering investing in ethereum for the long run because it's got much stronger tokenomics i'm i have bought and am holding a great degree uh, a great deal of solana of uh some xrp some um you know cardano uh, avalanche polka dot Sheeb, even just a tiny little bit of that. Chainlink, Polygon, Near Protocol, ICP, Uniswap. These are different protocols and cryptocurrencies that I am um, that I'm in right now. That I'm very excited about their uh, longevity. So let's go ahead and read a little bit of chat, and then we're going to continue moving right along here. All right. What short target should we look at? Unless you really know what you're doing, I would not be shorting. If you are going to short this market, then I would be looking at, and I just really want to stress that, I would not be shorting this market right now because you're betting against the trend. I, you might get lucky, but the overall trend is extraordinarily bullish. I don't want you to get stopped out at worst and uh, get liquidated. Uh, sorry, get stopped out at best and get liquidated at worst. One target on a short, if you were to enter a short though, short trade for anybody who doesn't know what a short trade is essentially instead of buying low selling high you sell high and buy low and then pay back wherever you borrowed the bitcoin from and you pocket the difference because if you buy it at sixty thousand dollars and you get one coin or you buy it at fifty five thousand dollars you get one coin we bought it fifty five thousand dollars you give them the coin back and then you keep the five thousand dollars that's what a short trade is for anybody who doesn't know the price targets i'd be looking at would be about sixty one thousand five hundred dollars because that is the local bottom that we saw over here and i could very easily see the market going through uh, just some more ranging patterns, breaking out of the symmetrical triangle pattern into this ranging pattern between 73 and 61.5. Um, I still would be very careful about that. If you're shorting, I really hope that you have mastered all of the other steps in the financial sovereignty way before you get there. You have chosen to live a financially sovereign lifestyle. You are living on less than you make. You have a budget. You have a starter emergency fund. You are investing for the long term. You are out of debt. I said that backwards. You get out of debt first, and then you invest for the long term. Then you have a larger three to six month emergency fund. Then while you are paying off your mortgage, you are also investing for wealth generation on top of the investment for um, for uh, retirement. And that's where you're doing things like trading this market and saying, hey, I'm going to I'm going to put money into this market right now and hold it for a year. That's the wealth generation side of the investment. I hope that you have done all those things before you're even considering trading. And by the way, before you consider the trading, I hope you have mastered the investment portfolio, because if you have not mastered investment, which is long term and simpler trading, because an investment is still just a trade, it's just a trade that you hold for 40 years or 10 years or however long it is. If you haven't mastered that, then you've got no business doing trades where you're going to hold it and have it open for an hour. It's a whole lot harder to predict what the market is. Believe it or not, it's a whole lot harder to predict what the market's going to do in an hour than it is to say what it's going to do in 10 years. 
it, I'm not, it is, it, it's surprising, but it's significantly easier to predict what is going to happen to a market in 10 years. It's significant, e significantly easier to predict what a market is going to do in um, 10 years than what it's going to do in an hour. So if you haven't done all of those things, you're not a trader. You are a get out of debtor. You are a budgeter. You are a long-term investor. You are trying to move in the direction of financial sovereignty. Okay, so if you're going to short and you've done all those things and you've done 100 paper trades, again, you might think, oh my gosh, Jeb, what you just described is going to take me three years before I trade. Good! Don't lose your butt because you skipped a step. You're not ready for the NBA because you beat your little sister in basketball. You are ready to go up against other middle schoolers. People get burned all the time because they try and bench 100. Oh man, I can bench a plate. I bench 135. Shoot, man, I bet I'm ready to bench 205. Drops it on its neck. You have to master where you are. And it's okay to be where you are. Continue moving in the right direction from where you are. But please, master where you are before you move on. That is how we become sovereign. Side note, um, here's how you do anything in life. Here's how you grow anything in life. What you do is you grow and you master, and then you grow and you master, and it goes back and forth. It's cyclical with this business. We grow, and then we master the growth. We grow, and then we master the growth, and then we grow, and then we master the growth. When um, the, uh, the Europeans were colonizing the Americas, you grow, all right? We landed on the beaches and, in, in, you know, in, uh, on the Atlantic coast, right? And then we master that. We build a little settlement. We, we, we get some degree of order here. And then you grow, you move out. And I'm not even talking about all the natives and all the terrible things that happen there. I'm just saying that that's what you do. That's what, that's what happened in colonization. That's what happens when you build a business. That's what happens when you are in the gym. That's what happens when you manage your finances correctly. You grow and say, all right, now I'm in this stage where I can start paying off debt. I'm going to master that before I move on. And then I grow. And then the territory that I just grabbed, I'm going to master that and then I'm going to move on or at least be in the process of mastering it. So doing those things are very important. You've got to make sure you do this in the law, in the correct order. You have to build a house the right way. You don't put a roof on before you build the foundation. Duh. So please be very careful. Mr. Always said, market not old enough to drive. Be patient and prepare for adulthood. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, let's see. Didn't mean shorting, but like 15 minute time frame, golden pockets levels. Yeah. So if Bitcoin um, and El, El Toro, I was not, um, I probably just butchered your name. I'm so sorry. I wasn't, I wasn't really kind of going off on you. What I was saying is that we're seeing quite a lot of people right now that are trying to make it rich because they are doing a bunch of trading and I'm not against you trading. I want you to trade. You can make a lot of money trading, but I am against you skipping steps. I am against you trying to put a roof on the house before you've uh, built the foundation. I just spoke with somebody yesterday. They had a Series 7, Series 63. They were a professional stock market trader for 25 years. That guy has no debt, hasn't had debt for decades, is worth 5 million bucks. Go for it. Go do some trading, dude. You mastered it. <laughs> I sound like I'm from Joyzy. You mastered it. I the nasally right there. You mastered it. Great. Go do it. If you're just getting started in crypto, man, get a good income get your debt paid off get an emergency fund in place fund your retirement and pay for the future and you will be so much better at trading because you're not betting the farm on it all right brief crypto said smash the like i like the way he thinks guys if you guys haven't hit the like button yet, go ahead and do that. Let's read some more chat. Go ahead and let me know what you guys are thinking in chat. I do want to let you guys know that today's stream is brought to you in part by NordVPN. Really appreciate NordVPN for sponsoring the channel, and I'm very excited for this match because NordVPN has done an excellent job of helping to protect all of you from all kinds of things that could attack you. NordVPN is going to help keep you safe and secure and they're going to do that through keeping you invisible while you browse online. The last thing I want is for you to get hacked or to have your funds stolen. So sign up for NordVPN. Make sure it's turned on because you can turn it on and off. Make sure it's turned on and keep yourself safe while you browse online, especially if you're on public Wi-Fi, especially if you're out and about, especially if you're going through email. 
where you could accidentally click on something. It's going to help to keep you safe. Just go over there, read around the website a little bit. You're going to be very glad that you did. All right. Oh, and you can find NordVPN by going to nordvpn.com forward slash Jeb and you get a big discount over there. No problem. You're right, though, but I'm not shorting. Just curious about the levels Bitcoin should hold on the shorter time frame. Great. Absolutely. So um, the levels that Bitcoin is looking at right now are looking at right now is about 68.5. That is a level that is uh, very correspondent to the previous all time high. And we've also, of course, lately had quite a lot of trading around that level. Um, it's actually about 68.8. So we'll move this up a little bit. But um, somewhere right around here is the level that Bitcoin has done a considerable amount of trading around. And this is why I'm saying I'm not worried about the uh, massive, uh, seemingly massive correction we're seeing on the hourly chart. Because Bitcoin has played around on these levels so much. You can see all these touches on this level, 68.8. Bitcoin has touched this level over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And the reason that Bitcoin is sitting here and hasn't dropped any farther is because there's now starting to become a large buy wall right there. It's it's getting to be pretty difficult to break through 68.8. And the reason for that is because people are starting to believe, all right, Bitcoin is worth more than its previous all-time high. We've spent a good degree of time trading up in this range. We've considerably broken above that all-time high and a massive rally is going to come. If we do tr uh, correct, then obviously the level that we're at right now, about 68.8 is a level. Below that, we're looking at the level of 64.5. Below that, we're looking at the level of 61.5. These are the bottoms of the most recent corrective movements. And then from there, we would also be looking at this uptrending level of support right here, with which is currently a level around $55,000. We'd have to drop pretty far to get there. That's a $13,000 movement, though, so I'm not terribly concerned about that. And the fact that we're back in the triangle, maybe a fake out. Potentially, it was probably a fake out breakout, but that doesn't mean that it won't end up coming to pass um, eventually. I think we are going to break back bullish out of it. But like I said, guys, it's really hard to tell what's going to happen in the next 10 days because we've got a halving event coming up. Um, and uh, when we do see the halving occur, that is going to lead to a lot of volatility. And I think in the, in, in the long run, that'll shake out to be bullish. Now, speaking of halving... I have a question for you guys. I want to see which is which, uh, which pronunciation. If I can figure out how to spell pronunciation, which pronunciation do you use? Having or having? Which one is it? Which is it? Which is it? Poll is in chat right now. You guys will probably already have seen it because of the way everything works. Are you bullish short term before the having? I am mostly neutral before the halving. It, like I said, it is very difficult to tell what Bitcoin is going to do um, before the halving because there's so much uncertainty. There, it, it's you know those people in life that are unpredictable. Her ways, uh, you know, the the Bible even talks about this individual. I've been this individual. You've been this individual. But you know, evil people oftentimes are this individual. Are are this kind of individual? They are unpredictable. You don't know what they're going to do. There's an uncertainty about them. You don't know what they're gonna, which direction things are going to go. It's kind of what Bitcoin feels like right now. It feels a little bit unpredictable. And the reason for that is because there is so much uncertainty about the having. So many people have so many different opinions on what's going to happen with the having. But quite frankly, the issue is we don't really have anywhere to root the opinions. So people can say it's going to go up based on what? It'll go up eventually. But based on what are you saying it's going to go up? right after the halving. Now it's going to go down based on what? There's not really a whole lot of evidence for or against bullish or bearish movement right now other than we've got the buy signal from Lux Algo. We had broken bullish out of that symmetrical triangle pattern, but as you stated, we're back inside of it. And so I'm not um, I'm not as convinced as I normally am as to which direction the market is going to move next. 90% of you are saying halving. That's what I think too. What, it's to the 11% of the 75 of you, so to the 8 of you that voted happening, why is it? Called, why do you think it's a happening? I, I'm curious. I'd like to know. I've never... I've always called it a having. I used to call it a happening, actually. It's called the happening. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Smash the likes. Love it. Yes, good morning to you all. Really appreciate you all tuning in. All right, let's look at coin market cap a little bit more and see if anything massive jumps out at us. The one of the biggest things that I'm seeing right now is Toncoin uh, rallying a hmm, a metric ton. 
no pun intended, no pun fully intended. This coin is one that has absolutely exploded, absolutely exploded in just the last couple of years. Um, launched back in 2021 towards the end of the previous bull market, immediately went to $5 billion market cap, dropped down to $1 billion market cap. Now it's a $23 billion market cap. If we come on over to ton.org, it's called the Open Network for Everybody, a decentralized and open internet created by the community using a technology designed by Telegram. Getting started is easy. All you need is Telegram. Um, cryptocurrency is the heart of Ton. Toncoin is the na is Ton's native cryptocurrency is used for network operations, transactions, games, or collectibles built on Ton. So, a lot of build out going on over here. A cryptocurrency that I'm going to be keeping a closer eye on. Very excited to see what is going to happen with it. But definitely one that you want to take a look at since it did just jump into the top ten. Pretty big deal. A lot of things you can do on Ton since it is connected to Telegram. Telegram has a huge absolutely massive community around it join the ton community 4.5 million community members absolutely nuts absolutely crazy all right let's read a little bit more chat and then we're gonna wrap it out here alabaster smidgen smidge said smidgen said you're welcome jeb thank you i'm not sure what for but thank you very much so I'm from the from the Netherlands, a duchy. We learned in stool, school that if you're doing something, then put the ing at the and, and having is a and having is a thing, not doing something right now. So why would it be having? We learned in school that if you're doing something, then put the ing at the end. The having, have, having exactly. Right. Oh, you're talking about you learned in school when you were learning English, I'm guessing, because you guys speak, you know, Dutch over there, right? Um, the, the, the Netherlands. Yeah, so I guess you're talking about you learned that in English class, which is pretty cool. Um, Dan Jacobs said, love this channel, watch every time. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Jeb, what books you recommend, please? Well, the first book that I would recommend is the book that I read every day. It's called the Bible. If you haven't read the Bible, definitely recommend you read that before you read any other book. Most important book in the history of mankind. Literally, the entirety of creation is settled on that word. Um, other books, though. Uh, I really like the book Start With Why by Simon Sinek. It's very, very helpful when you are trying to uh, it, it's very, very helpful when you're trying to figure out um, issues of motivation and um, direction and purpose. Um, Start With Why is a great book. Uh, Ruthless, Con uh, Ruthless Consistency is a great book. Um, the Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, on the other hand, is also a great book. Let's see. Uh, I haven't had as much time to read books as much as I would like lately with everything going on. Um, so I've mainly just been in my Bible I'm looking over here at some of my books that I'm actually, I have a new shelf in here that I'm about to put them up on. I'm going to be reading a lot more pretty soon, actually. It's funny you ask that right now. We're setting up a little reading nook in our home. Um, Bubble of Revolution is a good one. Um, let's see, the um, the financial, uh, um, financial Sovereignty is a good book. Oh, wait, that hasn't been written yet. Oh, oh teaser. Uh, let's see, uh, there's another one. What am I trying to say? The Bitcoin Standard by Safadian Amos great book as well so just a few ideas there read all of those uh, a lot of the books by patrick bet david he's read it he's written a whole flipping library of books he's got some great content over there as well all right guys we're going to wrap it out i do appreciate all of you for tuning in how's the decaf going it's going great just had my last you must have watched yesterday's video that actually it's really funny because it uh it was titled quitting drugs it uh which was caffeine was the drug in question to be very clear um they, they demonetized the video. So I changed it to quitting caffeine. I was like, oh, that's going to... YouTube's going to think that I'm like a druggie or something. I'm not, obviously. But uh, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty funny. <laughs> so anyway, um, I uh, decided to quit caffeine. And it's been going really well. I'm, I really, really am enjoying the fruit of it. Um, I like the decaf. Had a little bit too much for yesterday, so I had a bit of a headache because it's still coffee and it'll still give you, uh, it'll still dehydrate you. 
Um, but definitely appreciating the no caffeine thing. Have my last Coke today, which was which means that tomorrow I will be completely off of caffeine, uh, which is going to be great. Really excited about it. Trying to get my mornings under control. Have them be very, very, very um, structured. It's very important that they're like that. So, yeah. Appreciate all of you guys tuning in. Like I said, we're going to wrap it out. I hope that you have all enjoyed today's stream. And we are going to go ahead and call it to a close. Guys, I do want to make sure to remind you all that all success in life begins and ends begins with a personal and daily walk with Lord Jesus Christ. Spend time with him. If you don't know him, um, <laughs> I certainly ain't perfect, only he is. But I can tell you a little bit about him if you're interested. You can shoot us an email, supportcryptojob.com. And I also would heavily encourage you guys to talk to anybody else that may be in your life that's a Christian that would agree with the following statement. The Bible is the Holy, Holy Spirit breathed, inerrant, 100% true, inspired, written word of God, unchanging word of God. Anybody that you know in your life that would 100% wholeheartedly die for that statement, ask them about Christ. Hope you have enjoyed today's stream. We're going to wrap it out. Before we go, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for your grace and for your kindness and for your love and your support as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, I got a real good feeling.